I'm sorry if you hear whistles in the background when I'm recording this, because there's a soccer field right there, and they're being really annoying and trying to be healthy. Holy moly. Not only did we recently hit 10,000 subscribers, but I've also been writing this really sweet white Wabi Classic for today's review. This is my first time collaborating with a company to bring you all some really awesome content. Matt and Curtis, thank you just for being really awesome to communicate with, and it looks like Richard left Wabi in really capable hands. Now I've been writing the Wabi Classic for all my writing needs for the past month, and I've learned what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Here's my honest review of the complete Wabi Classic. I wanna make it clear that I don't get to keep the bike and that Wabi is not paying me to do this review. They just sent the bike to me to ride around as I please for a few weeks and so I could give my honest opinion on it. So with that, first I'll give you a little background about Wabi as a company. Second, we're going to look at the specs of the bike. And third, the pros and cons to see if it is worth your money. So first a little background, Wabi first came onto the fixed gear scene in 2009. It was founded by Richard Snow. And Richard Snook built up this reputation for being incredibly helpful, sensible, and down to earth, and his bikes really reflected that. Wabi became known as one of the nicest riding bikes period, in fixed gear and single speed circles. I mean, seriously, listen to these 100% real comments from the forums. Like, these people sound like they're part of a cult. I'm a 6,000 mile per year rider with five bikes, including a Pinarello road bike, although the Wabi is my favorite. The fit and finish is extraordinary, more like a Swiss watch than a bicycle. I bought a Wabi a few years ago, and it's right up there with one of the best bike purchases ever. If you decide to buy the bike, you won't regret it. I've always thought there's a certain zen to riding single speed, and Wabi amplifies that. They are gorgeous to look at, and a sweet riding bike. I love the clean and simple look of single speed bikes, and wanted to have my dream build. This is it. Everything I read about these bikes is true. Buy Wabi, you won't regret it. It's the nicest riding bike I own, and I'm coming from a full carbon specialized. Buy Wabi, you won't regret it. It's nicer than my carbon roadie. Buy Wabi, buy Wabi, buy Wabi, buy Wabi. I'm just kidding, Wabi's totally not a cult. Just buy one, so you can be one of us. <laughs> So here's the Wabi Classic. The Classic is Wabi's baseline model and it starts at $795 for a complete or $400 for the frame set. You won't find any name brand components here to keep the cost down, but all these parts perform just as well or better than parts with a fancy name and marketing team. All the parts are no frills but high performance and look dang good with smooth finishes. So let's take a closer look at the specs. The Wabi Classic frame set is TIG welded Reynolds 725 steel. Reynolds 725 is one of the nicer tube sets and is higher end than probably 90% of production steel bikes. What that means for you is that you get bragging rights for fancy steel and you get a relatively light bike with the ride quality and durability of steel. The quality of the wheel set really surprised me. The hubs were some of the most buttery, frictionless feeling hubs that my two hands have ever spun. And the hubs are fancy Allen key ones, which means that you won't need to bring a wrench along with you on your rides, and they won't leave nearly as bad bite marks on your dropouts. The finish on the rims is glossy and consistent, and most importantly, the wheel sets are hand tensioned, meaning the spokes are tight and perfectly trued out of the box. On top of all this, the $250 wheel set blows out other wheel sets that cost three times as much, weighing in at a slight 1725 grams at 32 holes, where most wheel sets at 32 holes will weigh in closer to 2000 grams. The Cranks is a no frills crank set, it's a 144 BCD Andel track crank set. And I named the Andal Cranks the best budget fixier crank set a few years ago, and I still stand by that. These cranks are stiff, come with a quality round chain ring, and although they won't be turning any heads, they look good enough. The three 32 inch cog chain ring and chain all come together for a smooth and silent drivetrain. The stem is 25.4 millimeters with negative 17 degrees, and it gives the bike a classic roadie look to it. The handlebars are drop bars and they'll function like drop bars and the brake levers are ergonomically shaped, giving them a nice feel. The setback seat post was a little bit too much setback for my taste, but it does add to the clean classic look. And the Velo saddle, well, it's a stock saddle. Some people will think it's fine, other people will absolutely hate it. I personally fell somewhere in between where it was good enough for medium distance ride 
for around 20 to 40 miles. On top of having a super tight and solid parts list, the Wabi Classic is also really customizable, and you could spec it just the way you want it, including custom paint jobs, component color, handlebar type, handlebar width, stem length, crank arm length, and gear ratio. It's really incredible how much you could customize on your Wabi build. It makes it feel like you're buying a custom build tailored to your specifications at the lower price of a complete. On top of having a super nice bike on paper, the new owners of Wabi, Curtis and Matt, are really friendly and really helpful, and they'll answer any and all questions to get you on the right bike. Also, they answer really fast. Every time I emailed Matt, he responded within two minutes. Like, I, I feel like that guy just sits down at his computer and stares at his inbox to wait for incoming questions that he can answer. Curtis and Matt are really understanding and they'll work hard to get you on a bike that is best for your needs. For instance, I stupidly specced a stem that was too long for me and I asked Matt, hey, could I have a shorter stem? And he just sent me a new shorter one, no questions asked. The Wabi Classic, as I specced here with upgraded 28C tires, comes in at around 800 dollars the complete bike including my time attack pedals weighs in at a slight 17.6 pounds or 7.98 kilograms without the pedals this 58 centimeter wobby weighs in at 17 pounds flat that's 7.71 kilograms, which is insanely light for a production steel bike. Here's what I like about the bike and what I don't like about it starting from when I first pulled the bike out of the box. First, the pros. The first thing that I really like about the bike is the completeness. The bike was very neatly packed and well protected. The entirety of the setup was just popping on the front wheel, pumping air in the tires, and putting on the handlebars and seat post. Regardless of how much bike experience you have, you can put this thing together. It's not rocket surgery. The reason why it's so easy to put together is because of Wobby's attention to detail. The rear wheel was already installed with perfect chain tension, the front brake was installed, the cable guides were installed, plus they were perfectly spaced and straight on the top tube. The cables were really neat without being too short and the negative 17 degree stem combined with the stack height are comfortable while giving a really nice and classic road bike aesthetic. The wheels were hand tensioned and perfectly true and tighter than any machine built wheels that I've ever seen. This attention to detail and pursuit of perfection also translates to the parts list. Unlike most other completes, nothing needs to be upgraded out of the box or even down the road. All the parts on this bike are high performing and will last a lifetime if you take care of them correctly. If you get a wobby, just ride it till your legs fall off. All right, but how does the Wabi Classic actually ride? The TLDR version is really nicely. Overall, it has a lively ride and its low weight makes it a pleasure to sprint from stops and casually climb mountains. Like I've beaten a lot of my personal Strava records with an injured knee and because of the weight, it feels like pedaling a lower gear when you're going uphill. The frame says geometry is somewhere between a track bike and a road bike. It has a few changes from track geometry to make it better for road fixed riding. The head tube and seat tube angles are about one degree more relaxed and the bottom bracket sits a bit lower but still gives enough clearance to pedal through all but the tightest of corners and the chainstay length is a touch longer for more comfort. The ride quality is really lively and the high quality steel gives a nice springy feel with each pedal stroke. It's hard to explain but it feels like the bike is working with you with each pedal stroke. You can feel the frame set flex but it's not noodly or weird in any way. It feels like when you pedal the bike says yeah that feels good keep doing that or pedal harder if you want and that the bike kind of encourages you to keep on riding it. I'm sorry if that really didn't make any sense but that was my honest to goodness best shot at trying to explain how the Wabi Classic rides. By Wabi. The Classic feels stable on descents while still being confident in the corners, and it handles pretty neutrally, and it'll behave exactly the way you want it to when cornering and descending, which is a good thing. Overall, the bike is really light, it's lively, and it loves to accelerate. The fourth thing that I like about the Wabi Classic is its versatility. It comes equipped with two sets of bottle bosses for all your distance riding needs, and it has clearance for up to 32C tires if your streets are really pummeled and uneven, or if you just want to do some shenanigans like ride in the mud. I tried, and it surprisingly does that well. 
just don't do it in the sand. The beautifully curved lugged fork comes with hidden fender mounts and the rear dropouts are compatible with fenders and rear racks. But because the tubing is so thin on the Wobby, I worry that weighing it down with racks and a rear load might negatively affect the handling. Regardless, the option is there and if you want to make the Wobby an ultimate commuter, you can do that. So that's everything I like about the bike. Now here's the dreaded cons. For a $400 frame set, I thought that the welds would be tidier. I'm not even sure if this shows up on the camera, but there are some lumps and voids in the paint near the welds. Also, I'm not a huge fan of the logo on the seat tube. Wabi is all about finding elegance and simplicity, and the logo on the seat tube seems kind of redundant to me when it's already on the head tube, so I don't really see a need for it to put the model name and the logo again on the seat tube, but whatever. And yep, that's about all there is for what I don't like about the Wobby. So is the Wobby Classic worth your hard earned money? Yes, 100%. Yep. Should I say more? All right. The complete Wobby Classic is an incredible riding bike, period. And at only $800 for such a nice bike, it makes my verdict really easy to hand down. It rivals the ride quality of custom builds while being half the price. And while it is a complete, the level of customizability lets you fine tune the bike to your unique needs. So yeah, it's worth the money. Wabi really focuses on three things with their bikes. That's value for your money, ride quality, and weight. And I think they really hit the nail on the head on each of these three things. If you have $800 to spend on a fixed gear, I think that the Wobby Classic is the best use of your money. Are any of you part of the cult of Wobby? I mean, do any of you ride a Wobby? Let us know what you think about Wobby down in the comments. If you want to stay updated on the channel and know when videos are going to be uploaded, do give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to literally follow me and see what my whereabouts are, give me a follow and stalk me on Strava. And if you are new to the channel and you want fixed gear videos just like this one, send straight to your sub box, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. And again, thank you, Matt and Curtis, for this opportunity to ride that bike and to do this review. And I will see you all in the next video.